Okay, cool. So hi everyone, uh, I'm Jia Zhen. I also go by Jojo. So both Bo and I will be your TA for your homework three and homework four. Um, so before our lab starts, I want to make several announcements. The first thing is remember to fill out homework two feedback survey. Um, homework three is due on Monday instead of Sunday night because of the wellness day. Um, and also we have uploaded a new version of homework three this morning, uh, actually this afternoon. And please do not work on part four, sorry, please do not work on part five and part six yet uh, until we make an announcement that all the data sets are finalized, okay? Uh, and if you have any question, always feel free to post in the Slack channel. Uh, and something, something interesting about the homework is we actually have two bonus questions at the end of homework three. And it's more like redesigning the homework questions for next year students. So if your solution is selected for the huge future homework, uh, you will be granted five points. And besides, we have office hour uh, every Friday and every Saturday. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to come if you have any question. Um, and definitely start early for this homework. Uh, it's not like it's very complex, but a lot of there will be a lot of bash commands and some some commands would require you to submit on a web page and those web pages sometimes can be slow if a lot of people are using it so i would suggest you start early for this homework okay and let's do a quick review on chipsig uh, i think shirley also talked about chipsig in this morning's pre-recorded video but the key idea is uh, we want to cross-link protein and dna into the status of binding together and then we can pull down the protein that we're specifically interested in by adding an antibody that only binds to the protein we're interested in. Uh, and then you can sonificate um, the DNA and protein into smaller fragments and then do PCR to enrich uh, the DNA fragments and then send it for sequencing. Um, so there are non-histone chip and histone chip. Non-histone chip is more like targeting uh, transcriptional factors binding, while histone chip is more like trying to find histone modifications. And here is an example of how chipsig signal would look like. Uh, in the left figure, the, the, the chip chip is actually uh, immunoprecipitation followed by microarray, uh, while the middle figure is immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing, which is our data set for this homework. Uh, there's also, you might also heard about control. Uh, it's just not adding antibody, but still do the same procedure of, you know, sonification and uh, PCR and send for sequencing uh, as a control or as background signal. So on the right, it's uh, an example of different, different protein chip signal. Uh, so, for example, CTCF is a transcriptional factor. So you, you would see very sharp signals uh, at very specific genome location. That's because transcriptional factor like CTCF, they only bind to unique DNA patterns. And for RNA polymerase too, you will see a much wider um, peak signals. And for the later two, it's histone modifications. Uh, it's much wider and much deeper signals compared to the transcriptional factors. Um, and we keep saying peak calling for chipsig because as you can see, it's like, it's like small peaks, right? Uh, when, when there is a binding event at a specific location. Cool. Um, so, so now I'll go over the part one of homework three, which is about the initial processing of chipsig data. Uh, and we use a lot of MACS. And here is a general workflow of ChIP-seq analysis. Um, we send ChIP-seq library for sequencing and company like Illumina would return us fast Q file. It's also the starting file for your uh, question one. And then we want to align it, uh, align the fast Q file to human genome and which will give us BAM file. And then we want, may want to do some quality control here and then perform peak calling using tool like MACS2. 
uh, and that will give us a bad file. Uh, you, you might want to do quality control again. And then for downstream analysis, there will be motive discovery, co-interacting TF finding, and also maybe integrate with you know, RNA-seq data and so on. So there will be a lot of downstream analysis of ChIP-seq. Um, I'll also go over bash script just because we will use a lot of bash script in this homework. Uh, here is your bash script header. You can actually adjust the running time and running memory. So, so time is here, it's set in minutes. If you want it to run longer, you just set it to a longer time. Uh, so the same thing for memory. But just to um, let you know, if you make it too long and too large memory, the server might actually put your job to, you know, to later, uh, to later queue. So you might wait longer for your job to run. And here, uh, slash O is your output file and slash E is your error file. So no matter what should be output to your uh, terminal will actually be output to these two files. You can also change the name. So, you know, uh, you can take a look at those files later. And then uh, we also have, we also received some worries about uh, which module to load. I mean, we will cover it in this lab as well, but when you are unsure in a new environment, you can always type module available, a uh, module avail, or you can type module spider followed by module name, which will give you which packages you should load together with the package. Um, and then to submit your draw on a Slurm server, you, you just type sbatch your script name. And then to check the progress, you can use SACCT. And if you want to cancel the job, you, you can just do S cancel job ID. If you want to know uh, more options about Slurm, because Harvard is Harvard server is built based on Slurm. Um, I think Slurm is also widely used in many other systems. So it would be nice to, you know, maybe learn more about it in your free time. And then uh, we also require a lot of screenshots in this homework. Here is just how you can insert figures in your RMD file. Um, yeah, I think I can go next slide. Oh, sorry. So now let's talk more about MACS. Um, so MC, MACS is actually a tool developed by Dr. Shirley Liu's lab in 2008. And I think it's definitely one of the most standard and most widely used tool for analyzing chipset data. And actually, even in recent years, uh, when people are doing single cell ataxic analysis, I would see their pipeline calling MACS to do peak calling for ataxic, single cell ataxic as well. So, so I think it's definitely a very nice tool to learn about. And I think Shirley already covered how MACS uh, work in math, like its mathematical model and uh, why they develop it in this morning's lecture as well. Uh, I mean, in the pre-recorded videos. So for me, I will just talk more about how to actually use it. And for, there is a list of functions available on their GitHub page. Uh, I paste it on the left side, uh, but the key functions relevant with our homework three is first call pick. It's the main function for calling picks. And then is filter dupe, which can be used for removing duplicate reads. Um, maybe we can take a look at uh, their page. Can you guys, uh, can you guys actually see uh, see the GitHub that I'm opening? Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, let's click on Copic, for example. Um, I just like how they give you a description of like each option. And it's also nice about, they actually give you, uh, let me go there. They actually give you what will be the output files because um, for your question one to four, uh, I think sometimes students get confused about the output because there will be four to six output files. Um, just to let you know, the one we'll be mainly using is the name submits.bat file. But you know, there are a lot of other statistics such as log flow change in the narrow pick as well. So, so if you're confused about what's actually in each file, uh, you can take a look at this GitHub page, okay? Uh, so now let's go back. <clears throat> okay, uh, so for question one, 
for, for question one, it's asking you to align the FASTQ file to human genome. Uh, and we want you to use BWA, which is a very fast aligner. Um, so if you check the BWA page, there are different options. We recommend BWA MEM because it's for reads longer than 70 BP. Uh, there are also options like BWA ALN, which is for reads smaller than 70 BP, I remember. So, so I think in our case, BWA MEM would work better. Uh, and you know, for your bash script, don't forget to load required module. And, and then we ask like, um, what proportions are uniquely mapped? So you can use SAM tools for getting those summary statistics, and then just take a look at your output file that I just mentioned. Uh, I think those st statistics will be outputting those dot out file. Okay, so, so that's for question one. Um, so for question two, uh, so now we already align your FASTQ to human genome and we got uh, some BAM file. Um, we want to use MACS to, to remove the PCR duplicates um, because you know in PCR amplification, some reads might get amplified much more compared to others. And so we want to keep, uh, so here's like keep dupe one, which means we'll only want to keep one read of those duplicates. Uh, and, and again, don't remember to load uh, Cento OS 6. I think it's required for MACS2 to work. Uh, and then the filter dupe slash I is just passed to your input BAM file. And then keep duplicates is how many reads you want to keep. Slash O is the name of the output, uh, the output bad file you want. Okay, and then uh, we also ask you what's what's the percentage of reads that are redundant. You can actually find that in your dot err file. So so there will be a lot of lines printed, and there will be one line saying uh, maybe I can show you guys in the I can show you guys in the terminal. One second. Uh, so can you guys see my screen of the terminal commands? So, yeah. okay, thank, thank you. So there will, be a, there will be a line saying redundant read of alignment file uh, 0.17. So that's like the percentage of redundant reads in your, uh, in your BAM file, okay? Uh, now let's go back. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so that's like a part of the quality control process. Uh, and even though I know this question is only for graduate students, but I think for, for undergrad, uh, in order to do Q3, Q4, you also need to do Q2 as well. Okay. Uh, and then for question three, it's also like quality control as Shirley talked in lecture, where we want to further filter the peak results by FDR and by full change. So I think she, she said like, you know, in the past when there's really small amount of reads available, the full change is set to two, but you know, as nowadays sequencing technology gets more and more powerful, you can set full change to much higher number. Uh, so in this question, we're asking you to set it at five and again, load the required packages. And so now we're using the call pick function to perform, uh, to perform the pick calling step. And you know, you can you can set the FDR by by the slash Q, and you can change the full change by setting this FE cutoff uh, option. So so on the bottom I list like what are what does each command mean and what you should put there. Uh, so I think if you if you follow this, that, that should be fine. And then we ask, how many peaks do you get from each condition? Um, so you, you can just do, do an additional WC slash L, which is word count by line uh, of your 
you know, of your output file. And as I said, it will output multiple files. And the one we want to use for downstream analysis is submits, oh, sorry, is submits.bad. And it should open with this prefix. For example, if you put slash n uh, Q3, then your output would be Q3 slash under slash uh, submits.bad. So that would be the bad file we want for downstream analysis. And you want to do this for both the normal sample and the tumor sample. Uh, and also, by the way, so for, for our homework, we're using uh, AR ChIP-seq, we're specifically pulling down, I think, androgen receptor in prostate uh, sample, both prostate cancer and prostate normal sample. Because I think in lecture, Shirley also mentioned how estrogen get, you know, upregulated in breast cancer sample. So it's a similar idea. We're just looking at androgen receptor chip seq results in, uh, in prostate samples. Okay. Uh, and for question four, um, so, so by the way, uh, in, this, in this step, MACS2 can do, uh, can, can perform pig calling without a control. So, so that's why we only have slash T here, but we don't have slash C because we don't have a control file. The normal sample is like normal sample. It's not the background DNA input control. But in question four, we are saying, you know, since we actually don't have that control file, uh, you can just use normal sample as a control. And that's why we're doing slash C. Uh, your, you can just put your normal file here, okay? Uh, and then you can just change FDR and full change to corresponding value in this command. Um, so I think that's about part one. Uh, do we have any question for now? Uh, 